everyone for tuning in to our video series, Countdown to the Cookie List Future. Uh, this series will explore all of the different changes that are headed our way um, as we look to the deprecation of third-party cookies in Chrome. Um, here today, we have Kyle Malone, Director of Solutions Engineering, as well as uh, O'Neill Calderon, Manager of Solutions Engineering. Um, and we're here to chat through third-party cookies. What are they? Why do they matter? What's going on with them? Um, so to kick things off, I think a great place for us to start is just looking at, um, you know, cookies have been kind of under, like, we've been underway to deprecate them. Um, it's been a little while. I think it was like back in early 2020 when Google first announced that um, they'd be doing away with them. And it's it's taken a little while. Um, a lot of us were skeptical that they'd even be deprecated. Um, there were a lot of, I think, uh, bets placed on whether or not it happened this year, but we're, we're here. And we know that um, Google is finally moving forward with the deprecation. So earlier at the start of this year, um, we saw that Google started deprecating about 1% right, of um, cookies for global users. Um, and that plans, there's plans to like ramp that up um, throughout the year. So what we'd like to do today is just help our viewers, those that are tuning in, and the general uh, industry understand, you know, how we can prepare for those upcoming changes, um, and you know what what to keep top of mind. Um, so, to start, I think we should. Do um, you guys want to do some quick introductions on on your roles, and then we'll get started into exploring what third party cookies are and what's happening. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll kick us off, I guess. Um, Kyle Malone, uh, Director of Solutions Engineering. Uh, what we do over on our side, or my role is to help facilitate all of our partner relationships, uh, whether it's you know our buy side, sell side technologies, all the way through creative services, uh, as well as work with our sales team for enablement and operations team on efficiencies and new technology. Um, and then, you know, I work very closely with O'Neill. Uh, super happy to be working with him for almost six years now. Yep. Yep. And O'Neill Calderon here, very similar role. I uh, just uh, a manager level of uh, the solutions engineering team. Uh, and, to, you know, Kyle really nailed it on, on what we do on our end. But uh, also, I'd like to add that we also come up with the actual solutions, right? We, we figure out, you know, the our title, <laughs> our, our roles say what we do, and uh, we, we typically come up with the solutions. And in this case, uh, we've been working pretty hard to uh, try to figure out the mix of solutions that are we can you know provide on the digital side for our, our clients uh, for to prepare for the cookie list deprecation coming up. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys both for joining our uh, our series. Um, so yeah, so let's dive into the meat and potatoes of it all, right? Um, which ironically are cookies. Uh, so um, why don't we just level set with uh, what is like a basic understanding of or definition of third party cookies? Why don't we start there? Yeah, I can I can kick that off. So cookies have been around for thirty years, and and what they are essentially are just small files, text files, typically uh, that are dropped on a person's computer as they're browsing the web or uh, you know doing some uh, activities uh, through the internet, uh, and it basically tracks where they've been, what they engaged with, what they've looked at, um, and it really has allowed us uh, in the advertising industry to make. Uh, audience is addressable, measurable, uh, and, and really figure out outcomes uh, based on, uh, you know, uh, our, our campaigns uh, within the industry. Um, yeah, so that, that's what cookies are. Again, we've been using them for 30 years. Uh, however, you know, we are at, a, at an inflection point where this is becoming an aged uh, product. Uh, and, you know, 30 years of a product likely needs some kind of evolution. Uh, and so here we are. And then uh, the you know legal uh, factors have forced the hand of Google and other companies to move forward. Okay, so that's like a, that's an interesting point there. I, I guess you kind of touched upon my my second question, um, which is they've been around for thirty years, right? So clearly they're like a, a critical component to what has enabled the digital advertising uh, industry, right? Um, so if they've been around for so long. Um, why are they, why, why are Google 
removing removing third party cookies from from Chrome. Like you touched upon a little bit on like the legalities. You talked you touched upon like needing to evolve these solutions. Can can you guys share more on what what that means and a little bit more context? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'll uh, jump in here with a couple little points. Um, right. Obviously, we've seen um, regulatory changes, right? Whether it's GDPR or uh, CCPA. So we're seeing these these large uh, initiatives by whether it's countries or state level, um, you know, and they're trying to move away towards more uh, consumer privacy uh, and user control and consent around what information about them is actually allowed to be used because it's our personal data at the end of the day. Uh, and it is about us controlling what we're seeing uh, while we're browsing, uh, as well as you know wanting to limit that uh, from a privacy perspective. And, and I'll add to that that I think uh, one word that we we tend to not use is transparency, right? Um, I think that you know the EU paved the way with GDPR for transparency and how that data is collected, how it's used, uh, and and giving users transparent control over that. Uh, then we had California's CCPA come up, right, which was modeled after GDPR. Uh, and that really uh, was the, the start of uh, the deprecation of cookies in the United States. And uh, many other states have started to follow suit there, uh, like Hal said. Um, and all of this has, you know, basically, like I said in, in the last question, has really forced Google's hand along with, you know, a couple other companies that have done that. So, like, similarly to Apple, who has already uh fully deprecated cookies on their end as well i think one point too to also kind of go to or towards this item is is really you can either let the, the the industry make decisions for you or you can try and get ahead of the curve mm -hmm. and make the decisions for yourself on what might actually be the best solutions and try and work ahead of that and i think that you know Largely, it did start, I would believe, with like Apple and their deprecation of items on that end, uh, as well as, you know, they've looked at things like IP address, things like that. Um, and now we have Google following suit and kind of, you know, driving that forward. So they're both helping to create this this largely industry standard versus piecemealing it out to state to state to state level. Uh, it just makes sense for the industry to evolve. Right. Um so I think, uh, really, I think the key takeaway here from what you guys have shared is that um, third-party cookie deprecation has, this has kind of been like an organic, this is the way that the industry has been moving. There's several factors that have um, driven the tech giant to this decision. Um, it seems like, yes, this is just the way that naturally things have been kind of progressing. Um but again, and we kind of touched upon this at the beginning. We joked about it a little bit, right? Like this has been like an ongoing conversation. They're going to go away. Cookies are going to go away. Um, and we haven't seen a, like a, a big push or a lot of urgency from brands and advertisers alike um, or brands and agencies alike to, to really think about um, their strategy in terms of uh, adapting to this changing landscape. Um, and that could be for different reasons, right? Part of it is probably the skepticism around like that's not going to be an easy lift. It's going to take some while, a while, and it and it has. Um, but now that we're here, we've arrived to 2024, and we've seen that uh, Google's already deprecating or has deprecated one percent of of cookies, uh, third party cookies globally. <clears throat> uh, what do you think um, advertisers need to? need to prioritize in terms of leaning into uh cookie fr uh cookie free solutions um and like do do they need to prioritize it now do you think it's something that uh can be pushed um even for a little a little while longer um or should they just yeah can they can they wait can they afford to wait till they're fully deprecated i can start off here i think it's something that we've pushed off long enough uh and i think we you know the industry itself has uh you know gone through procrastination with this you know especially since google has pushed that uh due date uh further and further out every year um but we've seen other companies dive full into this like we mentioned apple right uh they fully have uh deprecated cookies on there and then there have been massive uh implications on that that we've seen uh and so if that's any indication i think it's 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 it, be, it would behoove companies or, or advertisers to to 
uh, to make changes now and immediately. Uh, and, and also because it, it takes time, right? No solution is going to be an immediate fix. Uh, and no solution is one fits all for every advertiser. And so um, there's going to have to be a lot of testing. There's going to have to be a lot of, uh, you know, uh, modifications uh, and, and also uh, re-education, right? That, uh, that is something that has to be done uh, internally and with a agency's clients, advertisers have to re-educate themselves and kind of refocus, right? Um, advertisers will need to evolve. They will need to adapt. They will need to innovate, right? Uh, though uh, I, I think going forward, they'll really have to focus on a more holistic uh, view of success for their media efforts. Uh, rather than that singular siloed outcome that we were getting from cookies, right? We were getting almost medium feedback. Um, mm -hmm. But going forward, understanding a success of a campaign is going to take a bit more information. It's going to take a bit more data. Um, and, and that's something we, you know, advertisers have to adjust going forward. And it's not going to be uh, a quick and easy fix. So the longer they wait, uh, I think it'll be harder for them to, uh, you know, have success going forward after cookies have been taken away. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, um, it makes a lot of sense. And I think something that you kind of touched upon, right, is that like the, the metrics for success are evolving. And I think um, uh, brands and agencies will need to really think about how it is that they're looking at data signals or what data signals they're looking at in order to establish those um, metrics for success, what matters to them, their businesses and their campaigns respectively. So that's really interesting, but the, you know, and you, and you kind of, you were talking about how that takes time to, to figure out, right. It's like a, like a scientific method, like anything you got to right. establish like a hypothesis, test it out. Um, maybe your hypothesis is incorrect and you got to go back and like figure out, you know, um, what changes you need to, to, to make. Um, so, with that in mind, we understand, okay, probably better to get started sooner rather than later. Um, how far along is later? When when will we see cookies completely um, disappear? Well, uh, you know, the estimate, you know, that's, that's still not 100% known, uh, right? We know the estimates uh, that at least Google has released in terms of this, you know, they've said, you know, they are estimating Q3 2024 for full removal. However, th those estimates, you know, could still shift slightly, right? Based on any sort of implications, regulatory guidelines, we've heard things down to, you know, governmental level, being able to actually track what they need to, if it doesn't go through fast enough, or it's, you know, it's not, you know, as sophisticated as it needs to be, and there's no solution for it, mm -hmm. then there might, we might see a little bit of a delay there. But again, the I think the biggest point that that O'Neill was putting out there is it's better to continue to push forward and try and test and learn and find a scenario versus showing up to the party late and kind of having to you know struggle to find what you need when you need it. Um, and I think it's something that we should always you know as advertisers be focused on as being curious, testing a new solution. Um, it's something that helps our clients in the long road. And if we're not doing it, then, you know, the industry kind of slacks back and then we fall behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I am curious if you guys can shed a little light on like what Google is doing right now between the 1% deprecation and the full deprecation, supposed full deprecation of third party cookies in Q3, Q4, 2024. Um, is there testing that's going on? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's what that that one percent test is, right? It's a small sample size, but it, it, if you look at it globally, that that's a huge uh, number of users that they're looking at. Um, like Kyle said, right? Like it, it's still a moving target, you know, and, and it really all hinges on the success of, of these tests. Uh, we have to realize that, especially for Google, this is a lot of what their business, you know, the pillars of their business. Um, and so, if they don't get this right, it could be really detrimental uh, going forward for them. And uh, we don't want to. We don't want to speculate on the monetary implications that it has for them, um, but they have to get this right. Uh, one thing I do want to know as well, though, is that, um, you know, uh, Kyle mentioned it as well. That, you know, this also doesn't specifically only uh, lie on Google's plate, right? This also has to do with 
um, like legislation, right? Uh, mm -hmm. At this point, it could be a moving target. So we are working towards what we currently know legislation is, uh, what, what, what the legal capacity of what we can do with data. Um, but for all we know, within the next six months, year, two years, that could change. Uh, and again, that could be a moving target. And so we think we have a solution now, uh, but that could definitely uh, change or, or mm -hmm. our, uh, our, our solutions may need to adapt to, to, uh, to legislation going forward. Yeah, but, yeah excellent points. Um, okay, so we've, we've established that obviously testing is, it's not only just important for Google, it's important for us. We all got to kind of figure out, you know, how we're adapting to, to this um, evolving landscape. Um, so what do we need to do? How do we, how does the industry start preparing for this, this massive change if they haven't already? What do we, you know, how do we get the ball rolling on 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 these initiatives? I mean, I, I'm going to say there's there's no one perfect solution to start, right? This is a combination of items uh, over what I would estimate is is a fair amount of time for a lot of people, uh, and and I feel like a lot of advertisers have started utilizing um, certain degrees of each of these factors, uh, like items like leveraging first party data, and that's you know. Who is your CRM utilization? What, you know, are you using a live ramp? Are you using an Oracle? You know, how are you ingesting that first party data, um, making it privacy compliant? Are we modeling it out? Are we building cohort models within that first party data? You know, you can get fairly sophisticated on that depending on the law, you know, how large your data set is, you know, that'll change client to client basically. Um, and that can affect a lot of things. Um, we also know that we, you know, we have a lot to do with collaborating with publishers and SSPs and seeing what kind of identifiers are still going to be able to be passed through, what kind of data segments we can use, what's, you know, legally compliant without cookies um, and, and things of that nature. And I, you know, I'm sure I'm going to leave some points up, you know, I definitely want to leave some for O'Neill here, but uh, I think it's a, super important to note um, that even though we've been utilizing third party cookies to build these, these targeting parameters, it's not not typically deterministic data that we're usually tapping into. So I think a lot of people's concerns of, oh my gosh, uh, you know, third party cookies are going away. We're not going to be able to target. Um, I think that's a little bit of uh, uh, you know being dramatic in that aspect because you know unless you're actually evaluating each specific data partner and how they're aggregating their data, are they modeling it out? Typically, they are. Um, it's not 100% deterministic, as I said. So we're not actually getting that one-to-one -one relationship from that audience perspective in most aspects. Yeah, Kyle, that's a great point. You know, it, it's uh, I think the future is bright for uh, going forward. Uh, you know, outside of cookies, I think uh, we've done tests on our own here, and we've seen you know uh, same if not better results with cookie-free solutions. Um, so I, I, I see a bright future uh, outside of cookies. Um, you know, once uh, the cookie jar is empty, we'll be okay. Uh, but uh, to, to well, what should advertisers be doing going forward, right? I, I think top level, right? There's, there's a lot of solutions there ranging from first party data, contextual, uh, household level targeting measurement, things like that. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll have more conversations around that. Um, but top line, I, I think it's, it's, it's really about, you know, staying ahead of the curve, doing your research, um, staying educated, uh, really uh, finding that mix of solutions. It, nothing is going to be one size fits all. Um, and then also experimenting, right? Uh, trying other channels. You know, there there are channels that are inherently cookie free. Uh, one, one we saw recently explode uh, during the COVID errors was uh, CTV and OPT, right? That exploded and that did not use cookies at all. Uh, and so um, we've seen success there. And again, that inherently is a cookie-free channel. So I, I think, you know, when we start to move forward, uh, we have to think in that same mindset and think that um, uh, we have to innovate. We'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, but, it, but it is about staying ahead of it. It's about, you know, understanding what your business needs, what your KPIs are, and how to reach those with uh, upcoming solutions. Mm. That was very well um, put, guys. I think that um, I think that for many, this can uh, feel like a, a scary time, a, a moment of apprehension in the industry. Um, 
But to both your points, like there's there's there are opportunities here, and the future does look bright. Um, I think that you know we're we're all going to make it through uh, this uh, cookie apocalypse, if you will. Um, I think in in to summarize what you guys said, right? Focus on on your planning, focus on testing, um, and just making strides now ahead of the full deprecation. Um, I would also add continuing to listen to our interview series uh, where we will uh, provide additional advice and suggestions um, would be a great next step as well. Um, but with that said, um, we will be back. Um, Countdown to the Cookie List Future will be back with additional um, interview series uh, featuring both yourselves um, and other folks at Digilent. Um, I think our next video series will uh, talk about growing and using your first party and zero party data, which you guys both said is really important to um, ensuring that the future is bright. So um, with that, I guess we can go ahead and sign off, but thank you both for joining us and thank you to our viewers and listeners. Thanks, Alex. Thanks a lot.